dates. This information comes from Chapter 5 in your textbook. Remember the four tissue types found in the body, epithelial, connective, muscle, and nerve. Well, bone is a type of connective tissue. And remember that the function of connective tissue is support and protection. And we all know that bone is known for that. So bone and the associated structures, cartilage and ligaments are all connective tissue. Is bone living? Yes, absolutely. The skull and crossbone symbols and other symbols of bones that you see have been used for a very long time to represent death and decomposition. And many people think of bones as being dead or dry and brittle, but actually the bones of a living human being are very much alive. Living bones are also strong and flexible. Bones are living tissue, which have their own blood supply, their own blood vessels, and are made of various cells, proteins, minerals, and vitamins. The structure enables them to grow and repair themselves throughout life. So yes, absolutely, bones are alive. The components of the skeletal system, remember they're all parts of connective tissue. It consists of bones, which are a rigid structure, cartilage, which is soft and cushiony, and ligaments, which attach bone to bone. Tendons link bones to muscle, and they're not considered part of the skeletal system. We'll talk about them more in the muscular system. The skeleton is a framework of bones and cartilage that performs several functions. Overall, the functions are to support, store, protect, and for, of course, movement. The first function of bone is for support. As an example, you can write the backbone. The backbone is the main support center for the upper body. For example, it holds your head up and protects your spinal cord. Ligaments are structures that attach bone to bone. And what is it about bones that makes them very hard? It would be the mineral calcium phosphate. The second function of bone would be movement. Movement would be contraction of muscles to allow bones to move at joints. Tendons are points of attachment for the muscles. So tendons attach muscle to bone. Third function of the skeletal system is storage of minerals. Those minerals are calcium and phosphorus. Inside the bone, there is a combination of minerals and collagen. Collagen is a protein. The collagen gives a soft framework for the bone. The calcium and phosphate are minerals that add strength and harden that bone framework. 99% of all the calcium in your body can be found either inside of your bones or in your teeth. That leaves only 1% of the calcium circulating in your bloodstream. The fourth function of the skeletal system is to make your blood cells. That would be your red blood cells, your white blood cells, and your platelets. These are, you can find the location of this inside the bone in an area called the red marrow. And it's inside the spongy tissue of the bone, which is at the ends of the bones. In a younger adult, in a baby, the whole bone is involved in making the blood cells. By the time you're an adult, it's just the ends of the bones where the red marrow can be located. And it's in the center area of the bones. The process of making blood is called hematopoiesis. And the progenitor cells or the beginning blood cells are called hematopoietic stem cells. So these stem cells can divide and produce any of the three kinds of blood cells. And once the blood cells are mature, they're released into the bloodstream. In your notes, you should have a diagram that you can label. Go ahead and circle that diagram, circle the area, and label it spongy bone marrow, and it's red marrow. And then also label that that's the location that the RBCs, WBCs, and the platelets are made. The skeletal system also has a function of storing fat. Where does this occur? This occurs in the yellow marrow in the center of the long bones. So again, on your diagram, um, you can draw it in and then label the yellow marrow and give it a definition. What, ha where does, what happens in the yellow marrow? That is where fat is stored in the bones. The sixth function of the skeletal system is protection. The bones of your skull protect your brain. The bones of your ribs protect your lungs and your heart from injury and so on. Question time, which of the following is a function of the skeletal system? Here are two good think about it questions. Pause the video while you try and come up with an answer. List the body cavities that are protected by bone. Second question, why does the body need to store fat tissue?
and the answers are list uh, the cavities that are protected by bone it would be the cranial cavity the vertebral cavity protects the spinal cord and the thoracic cavity contains the heart and the lungs it's uh, surrounded by the ribs why does the body need to store fat and tissue fat is an energy source for our bodies as well as insulation the skeletal system can be divided into the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton as well as the joints in general the axial skeleton would be the bones of the midline and the job of the axial skeleton is to protect and support the internal org organs includes the skull the vertebral column and the rib cage the appendicular skeleton would be the pectoral girdle the pelvic girdle the bones of the arms and the legs 206 bones about that's the number that you have as an adult and that can vary because some people actually have very numbers of ribs or vertebra or digits that's just our genetic variation when you were born you have around 270 bones and the, the number of bones you have actually decreases um, as you go from newborn to toddler and that's because your bones start to fuse the 206 bones that compose the adult skeleton can be divided into five categories based on their shapes now not their size but the shapes that they have and we're going to focus on three of those shapes which are most common the first would be the long bones long bones are in general a cylindrical shape and they are longer than they are wide they function as levers that's their job to function as levers examples of long bones would be the femur the humerus and the phalanges of both the fingers and the toes flat bones are very thin um, that's why they, they're called flat bones but also they tend to be curved as well they serve as points of attachment for muscles and they provide protection of internal organs examples of flat bones would be your cranial bones of your skull and your scapula irregular bones are named because they don't really fit into any other category they have a complex shape uh, an example of irregular bones would be vertebra as well as your facial bones the bones around your sinuses bones may differ in their size and their shape but they all have a similar structure the way they develop and function so there's two types of bone tissue bone tissue is called osseous tissue you're going to see that prefix oss a lot when we are talking about bones the two types of tissue are compact bone and spongy bone we'll start with compact bone it's the outer layer of the bone it's dense it's smooth has and it's very strong it contains both living and non-living tissue so location of the compact bone would be the outside layer the repeating units of um, compact bone are called osteons and what you need to do in your diagram in your notes is to circle an osteon and label it okay that'll help you visualize it we're also going to see this in lab um, this week lab number three so osteons are living tissue and they contain osteocytes which are the bone cells the bone cells are located in areas called lacunae that are in the osteon they're arranged in circles and they're arranged around the central canal and that's where the osteocytes get their blood supply from so the last last picture here is a drawing of an osteon okay which is this um, repeat these are the repeating units all the way through the compact bone the non-living part of compact bone is called the matrix it contains calcium phosphorus and collagen spongy bone is the inner layer of the bone its location it can be found in flat bones irregular bones and then at the ends of the long bones spongy bone contains red bone marrow and yellow bone marrow and remember we already talked about red bone marrow is the site of blood cell synthesis that's where red, red blood cells white blood cells platelets are produced and the yellow bone marrow is the site of fat storage periosteum is a dense fibrous membrane peri means around and it is covering the outer surface of the bones the periosteum there are three kinds of bone cells to know about osteocytes osteoblasts and osteoclasts so osteocytes are the mature bone cells 
they're the regulators of bone homeostasis. They kind of regulate both the osteoblast and the osteoclast. Osteoblasts build new bone. How do you remember that? Blast build, okay? Bob the Builder. Osteoblast's job is to build new bone. They do this by controlling calcium and mineral deposition in the bone or depositing calcium in the bone and is building new bone. Osteoclast, clast for cleaving. Osteoclasts are cells that break down or dissolve the bone matrix and release calcium back into the bloodstream. Some think about it questions about the cells. Which type of bone cells work to increase bone strength? The answer would be the osteoblast because that they put more calcium and phosphorus into the bones and calcium is bone strength. Which type provide calcium if dietary levels are low? So in other words, how would you get calcium out of the bone and into the bloodstream? That would be the osteoclast. They cleave the bone, they dissolve it, and they release calcium into the bloodstream. Question three, do bone cells divide? Nope, they don't. All the bone cells come from precursor cells called osteogenic cells. And once they've differentiated into the sites, the blast and the clast, they do not divide anymore, but they do live a fairly long time. Bone cells live around 25 years. Cartilage is part of the skeletal system and it's an important um, structural component in the body. It's made of connective tissue. It's found in many areas of the body that include joints between the bones, elbows, knees, ankles, end of ribs, between the vertebra, uh, your ears are made of cartilage, your nose is made of cartilage, your bronchial tubes, your airways. So cartilage is flexible and pliable. It's located, uh, what you need to write down would be the joints between the bones. This is called hyaline cartilage, ends of the ribs, between the vertebra and the spine. So three locations of cartilage in general. Function of cartilage keeps joint motion fluid by coating the surfaces of the bones at the joint level. Cartilage also cushions bones against in impact. Do cartilage cells divide? They do, but re really, really rarely. And what problems could this cause? So as cartilage wears away, it doesn't get replaced because the cells just don't divide fast enough. Another problem is cartilage does not have a large blood vessel supply coming to it. Um, so if there's damage to the cartilage, it's very slow to heal. Very, very slow to heal. Here's some stop and think questions that you can write down, find the answers in the, your notes that you just took or look in your textbook, and we'll talk about them when I see you in class.